Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know, I was watching a video yesterday. Um, I can't remember who it was by, but she she reads our comments in her videos. Um, she mostly focuses on GH, and one of the things that she said because she was reading a comment was how it makes no sense that Esme has a bump, has, you know, a, a, a belly bump, but yet Willow doesn't. <laughs> Somebody want to explain to me how that makes sense? I think it was, um, because I've seen this person in my live stream before. I think that, per that, that person's name is Freddy something, but it, it made so much sense. You know, when Nicholas is sniffed here talking to Esme, he was like, oh, I don't think you're pregnant, this, that, and third. It could be like a, you know, a little store boy thing or whatever. And, you know, she was like, no, 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 take a look, take a feel. And you saw it, and I'm like, wait, how does she have a bump before Willow? Anyway, at this point, she's just like, she's going to manipulate this man. She's going to be like, hey, listen, I need a place to stay. I need a lawyer. Um, otherwise, I'll sit there and tell, I'll tell Ava, and she'll never forgive me, which is 100% true. It's one thing if they had, like, a little one-night stand or whatever, but when you bring a child, you know, when, when somebody's pregnant at that point, it becomes real, okay? It becomes real. And Nicholas knew that. He's like, yo, listen, I'm not going to jail. This is literally my get out of free jail card. Um, which is, is pretty disgusting to sit there and use a pregnancy um, as some sort of a weapon. So, Nick was like, all right, fine, let's not get you a lawyer, whatever, it's going to take some time. And, because she was like, hey, you know, where's my room at? And Nick was like, no, 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 nobody is, is going to know where you are. He's like, don't worry, I'll find you a place. So, they go in some old, dusty storage room, right? And she's like, all right, well, where, where you know, where, where's the computer, you know? And Nick was like, oh, there's no Wi-Fi up here. And I was like, whoa. A Wi Fi. What, what, what is she supposed to do? He's like, read. I'm like, you like books? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I used to sit there and read graphic novels and, and comic books and stuff like that all the time, but I I, oof, I can't imagine being in a place that doesn't have Wi Fi. I just, uh, no. And so he's like, hey, you know, listen, I'll get your, you know, I'll take care of you, whatever. And he closed the door. Now, at this point, I was like, yo, you just locked this chick in her room. But, I, I mean, Grant, I'm like, well, what are you going to do? This woman is pregnant. You do understand how that looks, right? Like, anything happens to her, on top of the fact that you are practically har harboring a fugitive, you're so screwed. You're so, so, so screwed. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. I was sitting there reading some comments um, on Instagram, and people were just like, oh, if this was Tyler's version of Nicholas. You know, they wouldn't have, you know, he wouldn't have been sitting there doing this and that and the third. I'm like, yeah, I need, I need people to understand something, okay? This isn't the actor's fault the way that this character is being portrayed. It's the writer's fault. I swear, I feel like sometimes people don't understand that Google is your friend. And if you take five seconds to get out your feelings, you would understand that. Um, where should I go in first? Oof. Let's start off with Joss and Cam. Because, you know, Cam is, is, is worried. He's like, you know, listen, we haven't practically been knocking boots since, you know, the whole counter thing. Like, what's up? And at first, he's like, you know, is there a problem with that? And he's like, yeah. But what it really came down to, he thought that it was something that he did. You know, he's blaming himself um, for this whole thing. Like, like, you know, he did something wrong or whatever. It's like, no, no, it's not you. It's just what happened. It's going to take me a little time to get over it. I'm like, okay, cool. So they talk for a little bit. Michael comes in and um, 
they talk about Dex or whatever for a little bit, or, or somehow, I, I'm not going to lie, I can't exactly remember, this whole day has just been this rush bomb. Anyway, oh, that's what it was. Cam left to go get, okay, so yeah, Cam went to go get um Pi, and Michael and, and Josh were talking about Dex, and you know, how Dex, um, you know, is pretty much protecting, you know, Sonny and everything like that. And so she gets upset and she leaves. Cam gets back and Cam is like, yo, where, where's Joss at? Now, mind you, Michael doesn't know that Joss didn't, you know, um, I mean, Michael doesn't really know that, that um, Cam doesn't really know the whole story about um, Dex and Joss and, you know, all the stuff that she was doing for him. So now he, you know, he's going to get in his head that the reason why they didn't knock Boost in so long has something to do with possibly Josh liking Dex. Which, um, you know, I would sit there and say it's a little kind of outrageous, but she's been keeping things from him as far as spending time with Dex. I mean, the whole dumpster diving thing to look for the bracelet. The fact that she couldn't sit there and tell him about that, it's not like they were just hanging out or anything like that. Like, granted, Pam doesn't even know why Joss was probably in that alley in the first place. I don't think that he does. I don't think that he knows. And if you can't tell him about dumpster diving, then what, what else can you not sit there and tell him? So he's going to get it in his head that, um... You know, Dex is the reason. And I'm pretty sure they're going to get into a fight. They're going to blow up. And one thing leads to the next. And, well, again, it's a countdown. Um, so Carly's there at the meeting for, you know, this council to decide if they're going to sit there and move to cemetery so they can, people can have faster access to the, um, the beach and everything. I'm going to be completely honest. This is pretty dumb. Yeah, okay, so when this whole meeting thing starts and, you know, Carly's like, you know, there's a bunch of other families that didn't even know about this whole arrangement until they got a knock at their door and people offering them money. I get it. It's messed up and everything like that. But I'm like, Carly, you do realize, and because and... part of me is like, Carly, you do realize that you can sit there and just take that body, move it back to poor Charles, and let her rest there. Like, why is this even... I mean, I understand that her last wishes was for her to sit there and be buried by the beach. But you know what? Things happen. Life happens. You know, and it's, it's, granted, it's, it's unfortunate. But I don't, I don't feel like it's that much of a... a need behind this fight, you know? So anyway, she, she you know, she said her piece... Um, that woman that I keep forgetting her name. You know, I actually screenshotted it all one of my... It's so messed up because I actually remember taking a screenshot of it. So unless I must have deleted it by accident. But I feel like maybe on some sort of subconscious level. It's like my mind doesn't want me to remember her name. Like I've... Here's the thing. I've dealt with women like that before. And they are the most nastiest, pathetic, sad excuse for human beings on the entire planet. Because you know, the thing is, is that they're really bitter and they're really sad on the inside. And they may sit there and try to project this whole level of strength and, um, oh, I'm the boss of this, that, and the third. But you know damn well that they are lonely and miserable on the inside. It's sort of what Carly was sitting there saying before, as far as you know, um, you know what that guy did to her. This wasn't the first time that this dude stepped out on her, but she wanted that life, and she didn't really care what she had to do to what what kind of stuff she had to endure to make sure she kept up with her fancy, her her fancy little life. Um. She says some stuff. She talked about her past, 
which I'm not going to lie, I feel like in some sort of ways that should probably have backfired on her, blaming her for a death that she didn't cause that happened years ago. You would think that the committee would sit there and look at that and be like, why would you, why would you bring that up? Why would you bring up this woman's past, um, implying that she had anything to do with that death? That was years ago when she was in high school. Like, are you kidding me? But I'm pretty sure somebody like her probably bought favors and things of that nature. Um, but I guess time will sit there and tell. You know, I partly like this story because it does give us some insight to Carly's past. And it is something that is her own story that's not connected to Sunny. So I think that's great. But this whole fight for the cemetery just seems so unnecessary. It's just, it seems like it's one of those things where it's like, you have the power to sit there and take your mother's body and put it somewhere else. Some of those other people, they may not have that access, but she does. I just, I don't, I don't see it. I really don't see it. You know, Avril was actually speaking some facts today with, with Sonny after he started talking about training and some other stuff. You know, because Sonny was talking about Michael and how Michael tried to get him arrested and, you know, him Cynthia trying to bridge the gap between him and his son. And Avery was like, yo, listen, stop trying so much. He's a grown adult. He is literally a grown adult. Like, people get divorced all the time. Um, and he needs to find a way to get over it. And that's true. That's 100% true. This... This whole Sonny betrayed his family and this, that, and the third is BS. Is 100% BS. The only thing that I am faulting Sonny for is him sleeping with Nina. That is 100% on him. Okay. But this whole, oh, he betrayed his family. Yeah. Him speaking for Nina against Michael or, you know, just for Nina at their custody draw was definitely not a good look. But that was a snowball effect. This whole him betraying his family, this happened a while ago, you know? And this had a lot to do with the fact that um, Sonny said that he wasn't a victim. He felt like he wasn't a victim. Regardless, if the law says something different, he said he wasn't a victim. That's not exactly betraying his family. That's just him being honest about his feelings. And I felt like right then and there, this is where this whole Sonny versus his family came in from. And it just blew out of proportion. You know? Um, I'm not always, you know, when, when it... Think about these characters and, and our love for these characters is that some people can be very delusional. They, they look at these characters and they're like, oh, they can do no wrong, and this, that, and third, and... Um, you know, I try to look at things objectively, not because I'm a reviewer or a critic or a commentary, whatever you want to call it. But just as a fan of the character itself, Sonny sleeping with Nina was hella wrong, okay? Him literally cheating on Carly was 100% wrong. Him um, speaking up for Nina in that custody trial was hella wrong, okay? It was wrong. But Michael was taking this way too far. And, you know, somebody said, I think it might have been, I don't know if it was Ruth. And maybe some other people said this too. Them bringing that level of garbage, that, that animosity in a funeral. I mean, granted, yeah, it was afterwards, but still. Y'all are literally sitting there burying a family member. And you decide to get into it with each other. At that specific time? Come on. Seriously? Now, of course, after Michael talked to Cam, Cam, you know, texted Josh, was like, hey, you know, listen, can you meet me after my shift? It's important. And I have a feeling that <laughs> either tomorrow or the next day, they're going to get into an argument about this. It's going to start off. You know, with, with Cam's emotions, I could just never tell. And Joss and Cam, they, they're both very hot-tempered. Um, <clears throat> so 
So when y'all got Johan gets back, he goes into the room and one of the staff is like, Hey, you know, we had to move Victor somewhere. Meanwhile, um the deputy mayor, whatever her name is, I think her name is uh, you know, I'm not even gonna bother to try to remember. But the deputy mayor calls up Victor and Lucy decides to excuse herself into the other room. Pretty much he's like, Yo, listen, Robert and Anna are, you know, they're still looking into Luke's death. Um, I try to find a way to sit there and block Robert from using, you know, his power at the office, but, you know, I can only do so much, just a little bit of a heads up. Um, meanwhile, Lucy's not there trying to listen in, and she, you know, she listens in through the phone. So she listens in through the phone, she realizes who um, Victor's talking to. So at some point, Johan comes back, and Johan goes into the room, and he sees Lucy. So Lucy and Johan come out there, and Lucy's like, all right, well, uh, you know, I, I don't want to be more of a bother, so let me just leave. Johan's like, yo, listen, let me sit there and sweep a box. Um, meanwhile, you got Anna and, and um, Anna and Valentine, oh, sit there, Victor. Anna and Valentine listen to everything, so what they wind up doing later on is they wind up shutting off the box, this way, <clears throat> Johan wouldn't find anything, and Lucy wouldn't be in danger. They talk for a little bit, and Victor's like, you know, what is that smell? And it's, it's, you know, Lucy's lipstick. It's like strawberry or whatever. At some point, Lu um, Johan tries to stop Lucy from leaving. Sweets her bugs or whatever, he doesn't find anything. And Lucy kisses um, Victor on, on the cheek and walks off. Later on throughout the episode, um, Victor goes back into his room and notice that the um, the phone has lipstick on it. Like the phone is, is turned a certain way, like somebody kind of rushed and put it down. And when he picks it up, he looks at the lipstick and smells it. He's like, stronger. So now he is fully onto Lucy, which by the way, Lucy gets back, tells Anna and, um, let me get her name. I think her name is Andreas. Anyway, um, she gets some vital information as far as who is um, Victor's contact. With that being said, Anna's like, yo, listen, this is dangerous. You got to sit there and stop now. Both of them are urging her, like, yo, listen, we're going to pull you out this whole thing. Lucy fights them for a little bit, talking about, oh, I was so close and just, you know, I, I have so many questions, this, that, and the third. But she drops and she lets it go. She's like, hey, listen, if you need me, you know, you know who to call. But at this point, I feel like Victor's going to capture Lucy and, um, I don't know, kidnap her and try to kill her or something. I, I don't know. It's weird because in my head, I'm just like, I don't think anything's going to happen to Lucy. Lucy has been on this show for years. She's on this show for years. She was on Port Charles. My point is, is that whatever sort of danger that Lucy's in, I'm pretty sure nothing is going to happen to her. I think that's why, and I could be wrong, but I think that's why some people find some of these shows predictable. Doesn't mean that they're not going to sit there and enjoy it because they enjoy it for the characters. But again, we know nothing's going to happen to Lucy. Just like we knew nothing was going to happen to Ava. She has way too much of a fan base. We already know that. Um, Brando, again, was just... Uh, Diane, I thought they were going to kill off Diane. I really did. And to be honest, I wouldn't have really cared. But, again, you know... Uh, to be fair, I don't think Diane was on the show nearly... I don't think Diane was on the show as long as Lucy, though. I just... I just don't. She has been on the show for a while, though. A really long time, actually. Was it like 10 years, 15 years, give or take? Maybe longer? Yeah, I don't think anything else really happened in this episode that I can really think of. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video.